I'm Dan Thompson. I'm the executive director of the Wheaton Arts Parade. I'm also the founder of the parade. We started in 2016, and this is our sixth annual parade and festival, and it's going to be our biggest yet. So we're in the old Volunteer Rescue Squad building. It's now the Rescue Squad in a beautiful new home on Georgia Avenue, right next to the Recreation Center and the library. Wheaton is going through a redevelopment. But one thing we don't have is an arts and cultural center. There's no place to put on plays. There are no galleries except the Wheaton Arts Parade Gallery. And so back in 2016, the Wheaton Urban District was trying to come up with a fall event that would also activate the arts and entertainment district. We are an arts and entertainment district, even though we don't have a venue. So that was where the idea was born, to bring the art out into the street. It was inspired by a parade they have in Cleveland called Parade the Circle, but we called it Parade the Triangle because Wheaton is formed by a triangle of three state highways, University Boulevard, George Avenue, Veers Mill. And there's also another aspect to the triangle. What makes this community? It's our cultures, it's our citizens, and our commerce. We couldn't do this parade without the support of local businesses. This building belongs to Leonard Greenberg. He is the landowner of many places in Wheaton, Green Hill Realty. And when we had to move out of our space over at Westfield Mall because of a little flooding, he offered this place for us to set up and repair our floats and to stage. But we really need a permanent place. I've talked about the support of the citizens and of the commerce, our businesses but we also couldn't do this without the support of the Montgomery County government. The uh, Park and Planning Departments have been annual sponsors, the Department of Recreation, the Urban District, the county itself. This year, County Council provided some funding to make this possible. We also have to apply every year for funds from the Montgomery County Arts and Humanities Council and the Maryland State Arts Council. So all of those taxpayer-funded organizations help to make this possible. It also takes dozens of artists working together. And on the day of the event, we have about 30 volunteers coming from local high schools and middle schools, and they get SSL hours helping us pull floats, set up the festival, and just be runners communicating between stages. So it's a full community effort. We couldn't do it without everyone. So what makes the Wheaton Arts Parade special, even unique in Montgomery County. It's all about art. You have to push, pull, carry, wear, or perform art. There's no political campaigning. There's no advertising. But we welcome candidates and officials. We welcome businesses. But they also have to push, pull, carry, wear, or perform art. You'll see some of our county council members carrying art by a local artist as they walk through the parade. If I could get one message out to the community through this interview, it's that you can join the parade. You can be an artist. On this day, everybody's an artist. All you have to do is make something or take something off the walls. Maybe your child has done something in school. You just want to carry it and parade it and show them off. Let them walk with you. Because one of the things we're trying to promote is Wheaton as a walkable community. It's a march for art. So if you like art, you want to support art, you think there should be more art in your world, in your community, bring some art and join us in the parade. You can show up at 9.15, 9 o'clock, 9.30. We'll still get you at the end of the parade, and you can experience what it is to march for art. Every year as we lead up to the parade, you might notice some color being sprinkled around Wheaton from what we call the yarn bomb, local women, many of them from Central America, Spanish speaking, have formed a community group to crochet yarn and they decorate the lampposts and they decorate the railings around the plaza. And this is just one of the wonderful things that has grown out of the Wheaton Arts Parade. It's become a tradition and they'll be walking in the parade even with a, a banner that they've made crocheted. The other thing that's special this year is we've brought back the pyramids the tetrahedrons. And we just put these out last week. You can see seven pyramids with eight-foot edges 
done by local artists. They're placed around the urban district, and each one has a sign with a QR code. You can take your mobile device, scan it, and you can listen to the artist talk about themselves and their design. So visit the pyramids after the parade, after the festival, or, or any time. They'll be up for a couple of months. And as you can see, our parade really features these large floats. And we make new floats every year, and we repa repair old floats, and these are our favorites. Vincent here was 2017. The Hummingbird was 2021, done by the Wheaton High School Identity Group. Behind me is a robot. And that was made by Loretta Kanashegi. She was a jeweler, a metalsmith, and she came to the very first meeting and said, everybody loves a funky arts parade. And she got it. She understood the spirit of the Wheaton Arts Parade. So what's new this year besides the float? Well, our food court is full from pupusas to panatecas, cochitos, from Frank's burgers to uh, Giacomo's uh, brick oven pizza. We have shaved ice. And uh, two of our, our supporters, uh, Los Choros Restaurant and Los Cabanos, are back again this year. And we have gourmet coffee by the coffee house stage. One question we always get is, can, can I bring my dog? And well, I don't know if we have too many rules, but we don't allow live animals in the parade. What we do allow are floats of animals. So if you want to bring an animal to the parade, make it a sculpture. I have a black Labrador named Lucy, and I wanted to bring her into the parade. So last year, I made Lucy. If you have a favorite pet, make a sculpture. Put it on wheels. Pull it in the parade. It's all about art. We start the parade at the intersection of Grandview Avenue and Annals Avenue. It used to be called the Clock Tower. but It's a blue pipe structure with mosaics on it, done by Arts on the Block. So that's where we start. We walk out to Georgia Avenue, down Georgia Avenue to Dunkin' Donuts, and then we circle the triangle, and the festival is at the plaza. So come, come and join us. Come and watch. Get there on time. It starts at 10 o'clock, and when you miss a parade, you've missed it until next year. The Arts Parade and Festival is, is putting the spotlight on local artists. We have 50 tents filled with local artists selling original work. And every year that number has grown. The Montgomery Art Association, the Capitol Hill Arts League, the uh, Washington Watercolor Association, the Wheaton Arts Parade Gallery, Gallery 209, they're all represented as are many individual artists. We also have three stages filled with continuous entertainment from noon until five o'clock. Some local groups, some individuals that may not get a place to play, but we offer them a stage because we're trying to support local artists, give them a break, maybe start their professional careers. Our mission is to bring the community together with art. And sometimes we do that with pop-ups where we have families come to our tables and the kids draw, the parents draw. And so at our festival, we ask every artist or every community group to have something at their table that kids can do, some art-making activity. But we also have a special kids zone where there will be free face painting and there will be balloon art and a little bit of drawing too. Back in 2020, when we couldn't have the parade, uh, one of our artists, Paige Friedemann, came up with the idea of having public art. And so we placed 13 tetrahedrons, large pyramids around Wheaton. And at the festival, we're going to have two painted white that kids will be able to draw on to make their own pyramid. So there's always stuff for kids to do at the Wheaton Arts Parade. So if you're a student and you want to volunteer, you go to the Montgomery Volunteer Center and sign up. But if you're just a parent, a part of the community, an artist, you want to help out, you can send us an email at info at wheatonartsparade.org. Go to our website, www.wheatonartsparade.org. All this information is there. You can see the program for all three stages. You can see a map of the festival where all the artists' tents are numbered. So you'll be able to go find your favorite artist. So visit our website. And throughout the year, we will have pop-ups. We have a gallery. It will have a show starting in November, the holiday show. And local artists can apply to exhibit and sell their art there.
thanks to Westfield Wheaton. It's Sunday, September 25th. The parade starts at 10 a.m. and all the artists' tents open up at 10. The food court opens up at 10. The beer gardens opens up at 10. The entertainment begins after the parade around noon, actually right at noon. We have three stages, so don't miss it.